What is up down and sideways, you beautiful individuals of this beautiful planet? We are back. It's League Unlock. Eric and Mark here with you. And we're now, whew, the whirlwind of MSI slowly pittering around us, which means we get to look forward and say, okay, LCS, off season, the, the quick drop off the cliff from an insane series between Gen G and BLG to then looking at LCS offseason rumors and the cycle of hopium begins again as we say what latest LCS squad has a chance at the world championship it's cloud nine yellow AK dignitas blue however you want to combine it Genji might be on the beaches of Busan enjoying a nice pina colada, but we got to get down and dirty in the trenches of the LCS and establish what we've got going in to this new season ahead of us. And yes, Cloud9 Yellow, you laid it out. Dignitas coming on through with a little bit of a retro flair roster, but certainly a roster that pairs together a lot of the names people saw on the sidelines at the start of this season and wanted to see back in action. Yeah, I mean, number one, that seems like what Dig was doing. They said, okay, who are the chess pieces that have already been knocked out that nobody wants? Let's put this misfit ragtag group together. And, I mean, we've already touched on Licorice was kind of the first one rumored here. He got screwed over, should have been on a starting squad. So he's not really a misfit that was sitting on the sidelines. But this is both exciting, intriguing, and confusing for Dignitas because, number one, they seemed all in. Dove comes over. They build around Rich. This looked like this is the future for the squad. And then after a single split, both of those import solo laners are gone. I get that this squad's going to get them a much bigger fan base, but boy, they really must not have been committed to those two. Which is just bonkers to think what type of decision making, what type of planning, if any planning, went in to those moves at that time to make that type of shift. That type of clear direction for the team and what your identity and where you were building your pieces around was going to be definitely a question mark. Certainly one that we saw with that answer from Dignitas of what they wanted to do and what the result was. Maybe, yes, this is a an immediate uh, alarms were raised and they said, okay, this isn't enough. We do need to pivot, we need to find some other avenue to try and get to our goal goal of making worlds they've been very clear about that with this lineup that they've uh, you know talking about it and hyping it up making that pivot just just like that after one split away from dove away from rich in this situation dove we don't know exactly what they're planning for him and what the situation is going to be for him i don't necessarily imagine that he's all that thrilled to try and have an opportunity down uh, in academy in any type of sense so i don't think that's going to be an option and I don't see really a transfer option within the LCS as well, because that's the important thing to note with Jensen. This is a transaction. This is a move from FlyQuest. There's no buyout whatsoever, my man. They found a way to get that contract over there. This is that full move. And that was rumored initially when FlyQuest was benching Jensen as they were open to moving him. There was plenty of time in the offseason. Uh, so four-fifths of these guys now with Speak Out being the latest rumored, the only guy on this roster that has not played for Cloud9. Yes, even Isles suited up for some games alongside Sven a few years ago. Obviously, Licorice was an icon in Cloud9 and Jensen, the iconic mid laner uh, for Cloud9. And it's tough to grade this team. Obviously, you're excited because these are some massive names in the league, but Sven role swapping back to 80 carry it's been a couple of years we haven't seen Spica on the rift since the debacle fallout of that fly quest roster licorice it's been a split now six plus months since we've seen him so there's a lot of question marks just because we haven't seen most of this roster play a professional game in a long time that's the thing. You're looking at this move for Dignitas. You're bringing out the paper, where you put them in the tier list, where you're ranking them, and you're putting, you're grabbing that green pencil, and you're putting down an arrow beside Dignitas, but you ain't reaching for that permanent marker. You're not reaching for a pen by any means to put that down because of those question marks that you laid out. For someone like Licorice, we saw an improvement, a resurgence in his performance for Golden Guardians. We saw him handle it and actually look decent on the international stage. An even more important check mark to look for in his career, in his growth as a veteran player of the LCS now. 
but that comes with a seat off season in between and that type of gap that type of question of whether then we're going to continue to build off of that resurgence whether there's going to be some downtime over then we get back to it or whether it's just all going to be downtime these are still questions that can linger about a player like licorice you can extend that of course then to someone like speaker who then as you mentioned had that run through with FlyQuest and how things ended with that do you think that is more or less the normal that you're going to see from him performing at the LCS standard? Or do you believe that there were issues with what was going on with the system that you didn't get the very best, the ultimate talent that you know Speaker can be and can impact at the LCS level? And then the bottom lane is the big one for me, of course, is Ven making the transition back to the ADC role. I think a lot of people feel like this is going to be more of that automatic, more of that given compared to a couple of the question marks that we laid out to see him perform. But that's still coming with that question, that doubt of whether it's going to be at the level that you are expecting from this team. If you want to, let, let's go glass half full. Positive side of things for this dig roster. Licorice, you shouldn't really be worried about because he was a premier top laner and only didn't get a team because he kind of got screwed over. Sven is going to be you would think a more well-rounded AD carry after his time as support and a better in-game leader because that's more the way things go as a support. So it should be a nice pairing with Isles, who even though he's been around for a few years, is still a relatively young player in terms of actual stage games on that main stage. Jensen, even though he got benched from FlyQuest, nobody in their right mind was saying he was the issue with that squad. It really feels like it was more... FlyQuest thought Quad had higher potential, but Jensen just honestly had one of the best splits he's had in like half a decade individually. And then you get to Spica and listen, there were still positive moments with FlyQuest and this is one of the most vocal, positive, good vibes kind of guy that you want on your roster. So if things do work well for this squad and if you're spinning it fully positively, they could go to Worlds in the LCS, why not? I think flat out, uh, without question to me, and I know I'm biased because I am a fan of Spica, I think that he was certainly the most talented option that didn't have a team, didn't find another opportunity type of thing right away, and that potential was there for another team to find someone that can be a star-level jungler for you uh, in the LCS and make that type of contribution. You mentioned up and downs with FlyQuest, one of those things. You know, you're looking at where this Dignitas team now can fit within the landscape of the LCS, where their goal of making it to Worlds, how achievable that is, given what you have to do, where you have to climb over people in the LCS. And again, okay, split the first split, but you're still going to have to make up room, make up ground, and leapfrog some people in the LCS. Who are your targets for that if you are Dignitas? I think you got to be looking at, of course, FlyQuest, the transition from Jensen, that type of move. And I think you're betting on it being a bit of that boom still, that things are disrupted after how disappointing, how dismal that run at MSI was. And you're looking at 100 Thieves, and you're betting, you're gambling that this certified proven potential and talent that you have seen from these players, that combination is going to be enough to leapfrog over the, the growth that we have seen from this young 100 Thieves team and where they were able to... I think undoubtedly overachieve last split compared to expectations. I think this squad is going to be maybe having the biggest chip on their collective shoulders when you have so many guys coming back who haven't played in a while and you have, you're have you hearing constant noise that, oh God, this washed up guy's coming back and Jensen and Spica, you think they're not going to be double, triple, quadruple motivated against a squad like FlyQuest where things did not end so well for them? So I'm fully expecting this team to be motivated more than ever and going to become kind of a fan favorite and have the biggest Dignitas fan base since I'm a cutie pie was on the roster for this squad, which, uh, yeah, you know, it's been about a decade since that happened. But lots of good things to feel about this. The bad thing about this roster, I know Dig, or Dove, and Rich, they were fun to see. But what about XU? Because the LCS, we do it time and time again. You and I both love Spica, but XU just had a great debut as a rookie. We're fostering, growing, nurturing young NA talent. And after a single split, you say, mm, thanks, but we can get a veteran, so bye, good luck. And we're no longer afforded the luxury that 
a 10 team league used to give us and i say luxury with the you know asterisks because it never really felt all that much of a luxury at the end of the day where you could kick the can down the road you could say oh we're making an upgrade we're making a switch someone else is going to pick up x you someone else is going to uh, you know slot them in towards the bottom of the lcs you'll still pick up stage experience and if you truly are that talent that potential that we see in you you'll find a rise your way through back into one of these attention into the eyes of these teams that are eyeing a top spot not necessarily the case and certainly not one that we see with eight teams in the league and teams that have aspirations to move up to improve to not be that bottom tier of the lcs that's a tough move everybody think when you're talking about xu and what we saw from him this split and how he was able to play number one difficult job in the first place to step in as that rookie into the situation with yes established professional players in dove and rich but obviously the language gap everything else that had to go through for this team it's a tough ask for that young player and i think that what we saw from him and the skill that you could see from him with that decision making that's what i liked from xq and i wanted to see that runway extended give him more of an opportunity I am a big fan of speaker. I do think that it is the right move overall when you're talking about what the goal is for this Dignitas lineup and how quickly and how short that window for this goal can be. But you do have to do consider exactly that and what we talk about and how much we preach about bringing in NA talent, giving them the right room, the right environment to succeed and have that opportunity to fail and then learn and grow from it type of thing. This isn't exactly providing that for Exit. We're holding out hope, really, in the eight-team team, eight-team team league, as you mentioned. Really, the only squad he could drop into that's going to be an upgrade is Immortals. And we're holding out hope that Coach Enero heading into this split saw the talent potential for XU because he's, he's a huge upgrade over what we were getting out of our mail in the spring split on IMT. So maybe he can find himself a spot there, but... In-game and out-of-game maturity level that we saw out of XU as a rookie, he is more than deserving of being an LCS starting caliber jungler. So hopefully we're seeing him with IMT. It's hard because you never want to label a guy as this is it, this is all you are type of thing because there have been multiple times that we do label somebody that and then all of a sudden you do get a redefinition of who they are, what they're capable in their career but you do have to look at that one for Immortals, Azar Mayo, and one of these ones where we have seen, obviously, incredibly successful, incredibly impactful performances and timelines within the LCS. We've also seen it where it is damn near invisible. This guy is not the impact player that you need to be relying on at this level. And if you're looking to take that X factor, take that next level, that big jump for a squad like Immortals who does need to do quite a lot of jumping in the LCS order, taking a chance, taking a risk on adding some runway for a player like XU at this point given what you saw last split I think that would be a smart move from Immortals it seems like a no-brainer otherwise XU was left to rot in the challenger scene in the LCS where so many times we see a player it seems to be once they get promoted and then go back down it seems so difficult for them to climb back a guy like Dokla is one of the few that I could think of that ever got that starting spot again and look at what he's done with it on NRG there's crazy factors and it's so many factors that it's not just factors that are within yourself it's about the other things around you other people other things that happen all these sorts of things at that point when you're talking about players going up and down in that sense keeping it at that base level keeping you on a stable playing ground to move up and improve to learn from an important thing and one of those ones where i don't want that taken away from a player like xu i think that he is certainly only going to improve if you're keeping him at this type of level a trip down you're risking too much at that point still think he'll get find him way find a way to get another opportunity for himself and if that's the casualty that dignitas has to do for the spicy roster then the veteran boys better deliver because if these guys do actually show up and put a decent power level where they're contending for a world spot the dig fan base it's going to be stratospheric levels of climbing now, they have to step in and deliver on their names, on what people have established with their careers for this project to work. And in order to get that start that you need, because if you are behind the eight ball for this Dignitas team and having to make that climb, having to put yourself in a position where you are assuring yourself that spot for Worlds, that's a tough ask. And it becomes even tougher when we start to ask the question of, well, which 
of the seeds to worlds are you aiming for as the lcs representative because we all know that third one is not necessarily a real one because you got to cut your teeth against eu to make sure that you're making it through to the big dance but that's the specialty for a guy like jensen and zvan is going through the old gauntlet kind of days where they have to run it through but either way much more excited about this roster for dig than what we would have if they ran it back again for summer we'll see where they slot in when we eventually do power rankings for summer but that is it today for league unlock eric and mark here with you beautiful people thanks for hanging out as always we will catch you on that flippity flip